Are autonomous agents the future of industry? The answer is fuck no. Take zero. All right. I gave this speech at Georgia Tech, I don't know, a month, month and a half ago. Um, and by the way, all of you who you may not know, I'm shooting this video in our mastermind session right now. And we have, there's 70 people watching live while I'm filming this video. So welcome to mastermind. I gave the speech at Georgia Tech um, a month and a half ago at this IoT symposium. There were all these brilliant people in the room. There was a data scientist from Ford there. Uh, actually, there were a bunch of data scientists in the room. The whole topic was AI. And during my speech, there was a question about autonomous agents. They were talking about how, what impact are autonomous agents going to have on people in industry? And I said, if you're asking me, are autonomous agents the future of industry? The answer is fuck no. And that, that video turned into a, uh, a short that we put on our YouTube video or our YouTube channel. And somebody commented and he said, interesting take considering autonomous agents are being used everywhere right now. And my reply was, no, they are not. <laughs> what you are describing are semi-autonomous agents. Okay. <laughs> I want to, here's why I, I take that position. Autonomous agents are not the future of industry. Okay. Number one, uh, three years ago, large language models had accuracy, they were about 88%. So the confidence level of the response, the word that it put out was about 88%. That was the threshold. If they're 88% or greater, that's the word they use. All right. Today, the best models based on certain, you know, if you get the context right and the prompt is right, you can get a accuracy level of about 99.9%. .9%. That's the absolute Top end, 99.9%, okay? To put that in perspective, that is one error for every 1,000 responses. So, and a response is a word. So that is one error for every 1,000 words. That's 99.9%. The core of artificial intelligence today is our large language models, Okay. You heard it here first, probably somewhere. Large language models are not the future of artificial intelligence, and they are not the path to general AI or generative AI. They are not. They are merely the first step. How do we know? Okay. The reason we know is because we are no longer seeing exponential return on each new training. Okay. When GPT-3 came out, the the whole the sky was the limit. When GPT-4 came out, we saw an exponential return in GPT-4. When we went to Opus 4, Opus 4 and a half, we, we saw exponential return, okay? When GPT-5 came out, we saw a diminishing return. When we saw GPT-5.1 come out, we saw even more diminishing return. GPT-5.2 just came out, and it's even more diminishing return. The ceiling for large language models are, is much, much lower than we thought. Much lower. Does that mean that they are not incredibly powerful? Of course not. They are incredibly powerful. And you want, but they are very powerful at making average people above average people. Really good engineers, great engineers. Making great engineers, world-class engineers. In general, large language models are very good at making people super people. But there is no one, <laughs> there's 68 people watching right now. If you are a person who believes that you can trust large language models to run autonomously without human supervision, you are one of two things. You are either not experienced with large language models, or you are lying for a reason. Anyone who is spending any time with large language models knows that they are too unreliable to run autonomously unless, 
Okay. I'm going to segue into a very important rule. I had this conversation with Vaughn the other day. Um, one of the greatest skills you can learn, I, we're teaching this IGP, um, Integrator Growth Program, and I'm getting ready to do the operations lesson. And what I'm going to talk about in operations is delegation. One of the things I'm talking about is delegating. One of the hardest things for high performers to do is delegate. Okay. And so there's a rule in delegation. Okay. Never ever delegate something for the very first time that you are not perfectly comfortable with the person you're delegating to only getting it 70% right. Okay. <laughs> you have to expect they are going to get it only 70% right. If it needs to be greater than 70% right, don't delegate it. Do it yourself. Okay. Give them more and more opportunities and they'll go from 70 to 80 to 90 to 100% to 110 to 120 to 130. They will be better at you at doing that task if you hired the right person and they have the right skills oh, um, after many iterations, okay? It is the same thing with autonomous agents. It's the same thing with agentic AI. They are not autonomous. They are semi-autonomous. You do not delegate anything to an agent that you are not okay with the agent not always getting right. Okay, that's not autonomy. Okay, that might be unsupervised semi-autonomous, but it is not autonomous. It is not autonomous. Um, that is why my position is autonomous agents are not the future of industry because when you couple together the unreliability of large language models. One in a thousand is a good track record, but it ain't good enough. There's a reason that PLCs have nine nines of reliability, not three nines of reliability, but nine nines of reliability. Why are PLCs design engineered to have nine nines of reliability? Because they could run for all the whole history of the universe be nine nines of reliability means a PLC could run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, over and over and over and over again in a loop and not have a failure that is a, uh, um, an execution failure. It could have a, uh, a solid state failure or a mechanical failure, but it will not have an execution failure in the entire history of the universe. Five billion years. That's what nine nines of reliability is. Three nines of reliability is I'm going to have one error in every 1,000 executions. Okay, that's why if large language models are the technology, autonomous agents aren't the reality. They're semi-autonomous agents. All right? I hope I never have to tell that lesson ever again because that absolutely drives me batty. It drives me batty. And if you disagree, in the comments down below, tell me why. All right, with that, like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.